Okay. Hey, everybody. I just saw a ton of you. This is so fun. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, I'm just going to get to the nuts and bolts of tonight. We Life Vantage, our company has a new Master Pro 10, and he did it very quickly. I, it feels like we were just celebrating him hitting Elite Pro 9. So it's great. I'm so proud of you. So crazy. Um, I didn't ask for a bio from you because I just wanted to ask you some questions and have you kind of share your story again to those of them, us that may not know it. But here's what I know about this man. I know that he is humble. I know that every time he speaks to an audience, people are moved. They're fired up. They have like, they've been shot with just the right vitamins to take their business to the next level. And he's here tonight. Like I, in a million years, first of all, I didn't expect him to reach back to me when I sent him a message on Messenger congratulating him and thanking him for hitting Master Pro 10 and showing us that it can be done still, right? And then he he responded like right away. And then asking him to be a guest on the call and saying yes, I didn't expect that either. So that speaks so much to the person you are, the leader you are, and the heart that you have to give back to others. So my first question, and I hope you're able to unmute yourself okay, is what is your real name? <laughs> That's my first question. <laughs> oh, I have to unmute. Okay. All right. There you go. Hey, Tanya, how are you? Good. I Thanks kept talking, but I'm like, you got to unmute me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so my real name, oh my goodness, this is so classic because I, I have this alter ego that I think my real name is Rai Fry, <laughs> but my mom named me Ryan Tyler Fry. And when I was young, I went by Rye Ty Fry. And then the Rye Fry stuck. And I've been known as Rye Fry for probably the last 25 years. So it's funny, even my kids, you know, in, if they don't call me dad, let's say they're trying to get my attention and they call me Ryan, they get in serious trouble. So it's Rye Fry. But yeah, my real name is Ryan Tyler Fry. Okay. I thought it might be Ryan, but I didn't want to assume and I had to know. So thank you for answering that. Yeah. Um, I would just love for you to take everybody back to the be beginning of your story and how someone approached you with Life Vantage and what it was that made you say yes. Wow, that's such a loaded question. And um, I'll keep it really simple because um, there's a lot of details obviously in that. But what's interesting about Utah, that's where I'm from. Um, every phone call, eight or nine phone calls that you get out of 10 are usually about network marketing. And so what was unique is timing is everything, guys. I was driving home after an experience that my brother and I had started a, a, um, a beef jerky company. And it was from my grandfather's cattle ranch that he actually bought for a tax shelter from a network marketing company that he started in 1957. One year before Amway, it still ranked 64 in the top 100 and he has left a tremendous legacy in the industry, but I was just a little kid. I didn't know how or why my grandpa was so wealthy, but he bought a cattle ranch. So my brother and I's idea was we'll start a beef jerky company. And we sold that to C stores and grocery stores across the nation. And what was unique is we were growing so fast. Guys, trends are everything, right? The, you guys have heard the Atkins diet. Well, that was right when we started our jerky company, natural styled, 96% fat free, all protein, and the Atkins diet was going crazy. And we grew in tremendous fashion to the point where we were growing ourselves broke. So what did my brother do? He went out and he got venture capitalist to raise more money, dilutes himself in stock, did it too much to where VCs came in and took our company. And all of a sudden I'm in, I'm in a situation, I have three beautiful kids, or actually two at the time, I was building a home and I had another daughter on the way. High school education. And I'm like, holy cow, I got a four day severance package. VCs took our company and I thought, what the heck am I going to do? What am I going to do? I had no experience, no college, no nothing. Newly married to some degree. I mean, only three. Uh, let's say I had two kids within, within three and a half years and then another one on the way. You know, that was that's a whole different story, right? And so, but at the same time, I was like, what am I going to do? Well, that phone rang while I'm driving down the freeway, tears in my eyes, not knowing what I was going to tell my former wife at the time. How am I going to support my family? And so my, my friend called and said, hey, 
I've got this gentleman. He's an amazing person. He's launching a business or has a business that allows you to become free. And he's taking this technology all around the world. And we're looking for good people. Will you please come? And I thought, holy cow, I don't want to go face my former wife. I didn't have answers. So I said, all right, I'm in, I'll come. And there was 12 of us in the basement with some guy in Dockers and a button up. Lo and behold, his name was Nathan Ricks. He's one of the greatest network marketers you've ever met or will ever meet. If you ever look into his story, he is an insane individual for this industry. Well, he was taking a company at that time um, from 1 billion to, to 5 billion with technology. And I thought, I'm in, I'm doing this. So I signed up, honestly, Tanya, to be able to go home and say, hey, venture capitalists just took our company. I'm now a network marketer and I've got a plan B already set up for us and we've got this. And she cried herself to sleep that night and I'll never forget it. And we got to work with that particular company. And I remember that evening. It's interesting that you asked this question. I remember that evening that I made a promise to myself. And I hope you guys get to this point. If you haven't already, I know there's certain leaders on here that have made that promise that you will never, ever, 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 ever quit. Life Vantage, this industry, and on yourself. And I remember when I signed my document that I said, I will always be a network marketer. This is going to be my path. And I haven't looked back. And so here you fast forward 19 years, I've been in the industry, I've been to over 42 different countries. And I can tell you, this has not been gummy bears and sunshine and rainbows every step of the way. There's been heartache, there's been tears, there's been loneliness, there's been failure, there's been ego, there's been all of those things that I, for some reason, had to learn the lessons to carry the mantle that we get to carry at every single rank with that this company has to offer for us. And so that is uh, something that I'm really, really proud of. Um, we were able to travel the world while I was building that business. It took me to the international waters into, into Israel and all through Europe and Southeast Asia while I was chasing my business. And what's unique about that story, Tanya, is I met one particular person. He was the general manager of the US when I came in. I was just barely 27 years old. And his name was Justin Rose. <laughs> and so it's so wild about how our paths can honestly cross at certain times. And like we say, timing is everything, guys. Recruiting is a process, right? We, we might talk to, I might talk to Susie and I might take her all the way. I look at people as clocks, right? Is Susie a one or three, a six, a nine? And there's some people that you'll talk to and they're 11, they're at the 11th hour. There's a few things you give them, boom, they sign up in a platinum pack. There's other that it might be a three-year process before you bring them into life vantage. And so recruiting was a process and some of the things that I learned early, but Justin Rose is my general manager. And if you fast forward to four years ago, when I joined life vantage 2017 in September, um, he called me. And he called me in 2016. I said, Justin, I'm not there, bro. Like, no thanks. I appreciate the call. He had just came to Life Vantage from Shackley. And he kept checking in and kept checking in and kept checking in. Well, fast forward another year, just before um, at the Pro 5 Summit in 2017, Tyler Daniels was there teaching the Pro 5s. And he said, I want you to meet Tyler Daniels. Please just come up and have breakfast with us. And I said, no problem. Why did I say no problem? because I was transitioning, timing was everything. And I was looking for my last home in network marketing at that time. And I went up and I met with Tyler Daniels. He taught me the compensation plan. And there's one thing that I noticed, everyone keeps asking me, why did you say yes to Life Vantage? And I'll tell you why. At that time, it was a seven year foundational company that had grown tremendously. In fact, Seth Mulder and Mark Shinsato were the first people that introduced me to Life Vantage invited me to the very first meeting. And I said, no, I actually went and I left halfway through that meeting because I couldn't see it. It was this little hokey bottle, little marketing piece and the label looked off. And I just thought there's no way this company was going to make it. But what I did do or what Seth Mulder did do is he planted a seed inside of me to always keep my eye on life vantage. And I watched it and I watched it and I watched it every year. It just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. 
And I'm sitting here going, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, Justin and Tyler sit me down. And you know what I saw? I saw a very foundational, solid company where everything was in place. They had tremendous volume. But more importantly, they had a product that was scientifically driven that wasn't on trial, right? I didn't want to go push a, a product that was on trial. And our products aren't on trial. And then the timing was perfect. You know, you can grow at the company from small to big. And then all of a sudden, we all know why we do what we do. That's leverage. But then I looked at the compensation plan. And the beautiful thing about the comp plan, guys, is this. No matter if you're on the front end or in the middle or in the back end of that comp plan, it will pull you through because it's heavy enough in all three stages. And I thought, okay, I see it. But you know what I really see? And I told this to Tyler, I said, I'm going to be the next Tyler Daniels in this company, but I'm going to do it in the international waters or in the international markets. Why? Because what he was explaining to me was that 90% of the volume was in the US and they were just now expanding internationally. Well, most of my career, Tanya, was where? In international markets. There's a tremendous lesson in what I'm telling you right now. What is it? You cannot compare yourself to my journey as opposed to where you are currently at in your journey. My journey is unique to me, just like Dory's or Seth or Michelle's or Amy's. They're unique. They're like our fingerprint, unique. There's only one of them in the world. That's your unique journey that we get to assist each other through. But if you compare yourself to Rifry, I've had... 15 years of experience with people around the world in 40 plus markets that I know and are really good friends of mine with regards to my network and being able to build through that. If you take a brand new person and he compares himself or a person that's six months, eight months, one year into the deal, how is that fair to that person? They're only going to be disappointed. And so I always remind everyone that I come across you are on your unique journey and that's what makes it absolutely beautiful because when you get to the end of your journey and it will never end, but as you continue forward and you stumble forward and you trip forward and you rest for a minute, but you don't quit and you keep going at the end of that journey, when we get to celebrate, look, I look at pro 10 as a celebration, but it's not a destination. That celebration can be enjoyed for a period of time. And then you get back to work and you become a fellowship or a follower, followership always precedes what? Leadership. And so if I want to leave a legacy, if this is now my life network marketing, then I get to just continue to learn and grow and continue to set new infinite boundaries. Now, I hope you guys caught that word, infinite. Infinite means what? No barriers. Most of us in network marketing, where, where do we live? We live in the finite barriers of our life. We set a barrier. You know how many people have called me, Tanya, in the last three days and said, I don't understand how you did that. You went from pro nine to pro 10 in three months. That can't be done. That's, almost, that's impossible. And I just looked at it and I said, why is that impossible? Why is it more realistic for the brain to say that's impossible and cannot be done as opposed to absolutely that can be done? And there's people on this call and that will be at global convention or in the virtual side of things and say, absolutely that can be done. And I'm actually going to beat that because you know where I got hung up. I talked to blue Elam about this blue Elam said, dang, right. Fry, that's incredible. Great job. I said, thank you. Because I met blue Elam at my pro five summit with Amy. Amy is my sister. She's my family. I'd go to the ends of the world for that girl. And she will be the face of this company. I know it. She's got everything inside of her, but here's, what's beautiful. Blue Elam almost a year and a half after his accident. And some of you that might not know this, but had a tremendous accident. His wife gets her leg amputated after 20 plus surgeries. Both of his daughters were collegiate athletes or had their scholarships coming. They both get paralyzed. Blue Elam breaks about everything in, in his face and in his leg gets reconstructed. And he's there at the Pro 5 Summit hobbling around teaching how to get to the elite levels. And we became instant friends. And this is what I love about Life Vantage, not my group, but he's now a mentor, a best friend, a brother, I'd do anything for that man. And one thing that we talked about was this. He said, Rai Fry, I, it took me forever to get to Pro 9 to Pro 10. And I said, you know what's interesting, Blue? Is I sat at Pro 8 for over two and a half years. 
It took me two and a half years to break through the barrier of elite eight to nine because I had some wrong thinking. I had some barriers that I had completely created for myself, Tanya, to that stopped me that I had to figure out. And it took me two and a half years. And then once I got my mindset right, it was able to break through the barrier and then smash through the second barrier. And I can't even wait to get to Executive Master Pro 10 by the end of 2022. And that's a bold statement. That's a million dollars in growth, but it's going to happen. And, and, I'm, and I can't wait for all the others to actually beat or surpass or raise the roof. Because here's what's beautiful. There's a Pro 12, a Pro 13 that is walking this earth right now that could be in your business or it may be in my business, but it's going to be in someone's business that does not even know about this company right now as I speak. And we have to remember that. We have to remember that there are, there are literally people speaking each one of your names in their living rooms that your feet have yet to go into. That's what motivates me. And so I've seen it. Now I've rolled, I've run, I've literally rode that roller coaster of gummy bears losing it all. I was a team elite, lost everything, bankrupt. My ego is driving. I got divorced. I mean, I'm struggling through custody, blah, blah, blah. You name it. I've been through it. And then you battle back and then you keep growing. And then you, then the company failed and they went out of business. And then you find yourself starting over. And then all of a sudden I come across life vantage and here we are. Do you guys realize that five and a half years ago, I was crabbing illegally on the Edmonds Pier in Seattle, Washington, trying to feed my two youngest kids. Had nothing, I had $52 to my name. Literally broke, I'd lost everything, I'd lost my family, I'd lost my friends, chasing a very toxic relationship and custody battles. I lost who I was. And that's why I love network marketing is because it will force you to be the best version of yourself. It will test you, it will stretch you, it will push you in ways that you've never been tested in any other industry. But when you get to the other side, you are dang proud of who you are when you look in the mirror. When you walk across as a, as a new pro one, oh my goodness, that is a sell, that should be a bigger celebration than a pro 10. And then you hit two and then you become a pro three and you get really locked into the business. And then you go to your pro five summit and you just keep going and pushing and moving your boundaries. And all of a sudden they become infinite. And now you start changing the world. And so anyway, that's a long answer to your question, Tanya. Next, I'll, I'll stop there. Well, I think everybody should get a pillow because I think we should have this go on for a long time because this is so <laughs> good. So who's fired up? Okay, I have a lot of questions, but one thing I just want to point out really quick is the way that you speak. I hope everybody's taking notes about that, how he continues to say my name. And that makes me feel so, it makes me feel seen and special. And that is a tip I've already picked up from you that I am going to take that I think is, I really love that you do that. So thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Um, a lot of people struggle with really finding a why that is that thing that will make them, when they wake up in the morning, they know exactly why they're showing up for Life Vantage. What would you say to people that are struggling to really find a why to keep doing this as hard as it is? Man, your, your why is different. We always hear the, the, that quote, like if your why doesn't make you cry, it's not strong enough. And one of the things that I've learned from one of my great mentors, he said this, he said, when you're sitting down with a brand new person and you're in the why section, right? So here I am, I'm talking to Mia and Mia and I are talking about, hey, what's our goals? What's the expectation? How many hours a week do you work? What days of the week do you need? You know, is that morning, evening? And we get to that. And all of a sudden you get to the end of that conversation, that partnership agreement. And you say, all right, Mia, what's your why? Why are you doing this business? And most of the time, what do we hear? We hear money. I want to make $30,000 a month. My next question is, have you ever earned $30,000 a month? Well, no. So, okay, let's, let's kind of just scale that back. I do know friends. I do have people in this industry that make far greater than that, but let's just break it down. Let me ask you this question. I'm going to ask you this question, Mia, five times in a row. Making $30,000 a month, why is that important to you? And she would give me an answer. Well, I get to pay for my kid's school and I get to do this and I get to have freedom. And my next question would be what? Well, why is that important to you? And so when you can start drilling down with your people on why is that important to you, if you get to that level five and six, 
that is the true essence of what is burning deep down inside their heart and in their mind. That is what's making them or creating the motivation for them to deeply, deeply look at themselves and say, I know this is inside of me. I feel it. I sense it. There's, a, there's this intuition that I can be greater. I can do more things with my life. But if we never drill down long enough to really understand why Mia is motivated, it could be I'm a single mother. It's the only way that I know how to provide for my children because I don't want to miss their life. I know I need to work, but I'm choosing a vehicle that allows me freedom. If I just do it long enough for it to get traction long enough, I can watch my daughter's ballet. I can go to their football game. I can be there but I don't have to sacrifice that to get this or vice versa. And so when I call them back, Mia, when, or when I call them back, Tanya, and, and Mia's struggling, she wants to quit, she's kind of lost herself, I get to call as an upline or as a business partner, as a servant-minded leader and say what? Hey, Mia, it's Rai Fry. I know you're struggling right now. We've had these conversations. I noticed that you haven't been on the phone calls. I know you haven't been to the LVAs or the meetings locally but I'm here and let's just go back. What's going on? And she's going to give me some surface answers, but then I'm going to go, Hey Mia, do you remember why you're doing this business? And so if I can't take her back to what is really, really deeply burned inside of her, how am I ever going to keep her in my business? And I shouldn't have to sell and convince her every day to stay in my business. Right. And so the why is very, very, very important. But it isn't until, Tanya, this is what I've learned and this is how I've built in Life Vantage. I haven't built with my other companies with this mindset is that every single one of us, where do we want to start our people? Instantly at activity, right? Hey, Tanya, it's Rye Fry. Oh my gosh, congratulations on your platinum pack or elite pack. This is amazing. Oh my goodness. Go and call 25 people this week and boom, you're, awesome. you're automatically pushing your brand new person to do what? go into activity. Well, let me ask you this. If Tanya is scared to death or driven by fear to call those 25 people because of programming that's happened when she was an infant, a small child, something that happened at school or middle school, or maybe in college, whatever that is, if she's holding on to that fear-based limited mindset, that doubt that's driving her, until we clear that up, there's nothing you can do for her to go into activity. And you guys are probably thinking like, what is Rye Fry talking about? He's on some tangent. Let me give you six steps that if you guys get this aligned, some of you might be like this. The alignment might be off. That's okay. The awareness that you might be off is a beautiful thing because when we can become conscious of that, all of a sudden growth starts to happen. So the first thing is this, this is where I start my people and I'm not, and I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's uplines and anything, whatever they're teaching you, trust that, run with that. This is just me to you from what I've experienced. Okay. I respect all the uplines, different groups, philosophies, mentalities. It is very, very important that you are, are you understand me on that. That's not why I'm on this call. I'm here to just give you some things and some pearls of wisdom that might absolutely set you free with regards to your business, okay? So what I like to do, Tanya, is I like to work on the programming that's external and internal with my new person. I like to go slow to go fast because if I just send him out an activity, he has a lot of failure and all of a sudden he leaves the business or I pump him up for the next 30, 60, 90 days and I'm chasing him just to keep him in, that's exhausted energy for me. Where I'd rather sit down in the first two weeks and say, let's go through this. What are your biggest fears? What's your limiting beliefs? What do you doubt about yourself? Do you really feel like you can hit this particular level in the company? And, and so we start working on it. So I really focus on the programming, why? Because it leads to the second step, which is feeling. If Tanya's feeling towards network marketing, like Vantage, the products, the comp plan, her upline, whatever's happened in her experience, if that feeling is low, what's her belief level, which is the third step in all of this? So your programming leads to your feelings. Your feelings lead to your belief. And if her belief is off on this particular company, or this particular product or comp plan or anything that's associated with life vantage or this industry or life in itself. 
how would you expect her to go into activity when her belief level is here? Because I, I could say Michelle and Sean Poe, what's their belief level of life advantage? What would everyone say? In a scale of one to 10, they're a 15, right? They're a 15. But what is driving that? Their programming is in sync, which drives their feeling towards what this industry is and what this company is. So their belief level is in an all-time high. And do you think their uplines calling them and saying, hey, Michelle, have you made your five phone calls today? They don't even have to talk about the activity. They are in activity mode. Why? Because the feeling of belief is in alignment. Now, the beautiful thing about activity when your belief and feelings are in sync is that the results will start to show up in your business. And what do I mean by that? Organizational volume, customers, new relationships that you're attracting. All of these things start to unfold in your life and in your business that you get to recognize and say, I'm in alignment. If that starts to go away, that means your alignment is drifting. That means your programming's off, your feelings are off, your belief level's a lower point to where you now are in activity and what's the result? Your business isn't growing, you're stagnant, you're stuck at rank, whatever that looks like. And then your results will always lead you to what? Your lifestyle. And so I look at that so intensely, Tanya, that, that if those six things I keep at the forefront of my brain and my heart, I know exactly where my people are based on their activity. So if I'm working with Amy and I can't get Amy to make a phone call in two weeks, what does that automatically tell me as her, as her partner, her business partner, that her programming is somehow off. And until I go do that, now, what am I talking about guys? I'm talking about the self-development side of this business that if you are not heavily involved in every single day, it'll be very difficult I'm not saying you can't achieve any rank in this company. It's going to be a slower boat. It's going to be a longer, more grueling road for you. Because why? There's a philosophy and there's a law that's, that's eternal and it's called the law of the lid. Meaning if Tanya's law is here, her lid is this, her group will only grow to her as far as who she is as a leader, a person, and as, as an individual. When she starts to see her group like hitting the lid and they're not growing or anything, what does it tell me? It automatically tells you, Tanya, let's get into self-development. Let's get into that program. Let's get into the changing the feeling and increasing the belief level. And then all of a sudden what happens? Her activity increases. She finds a new a platinum partner or an elite. I know that's all, I'm still on the platinum, but she finds a new business partner. She might, find, she might find three new business partners. And all of a sudden, what is her team doing? Oh my gosh, Tanya's growing. She's got customers, she's got people on the webinar. And all of a sudden the group grows and follows into her. It's a, such a beautiful thing. And so those six things, I promise you guys, when you dive into that, now that brings you back to your why, is that if you can't get into your own core with someone and really know why they're moved and motivated to do what they're doing, man, it's going to be tough to get them to do anything. So then it brings us to a totally different law um, with regards to network marketing, and that is sorting and sifting. And there was a great quote that, that someone told me, they said, amateurs sell and convince it's professionals who sort and sift. And I'll let you guys think about that. We'll go to the next question. So good. Um, what are some of the things that are tools or the things that have helped you with your stinking thinking? Like when it's been really <laughs> hard and you felt stuck or you felt like this is too hard, maybe this isn't my home. Like what are the things that have helped you over that hump? Man, that's such a good question. Um, obviously I, I'm, I'm head, I've, I've, I 100% fully trust that self-development is King Kong in this industry. It is Mufasa. And so, and, and other companies have proven that, you know, Amway. Amway was the King Kong. They're the, one of the biggest companies in our industry, but that company was set in stone based on self-development and they've proven that it works. And other companies have really delved into the self-development side of things. And let me prove why I love self-development. Let me ask you this question. You guys can put in the chat. Okay. Do you think that everything, the most important thing in this, in, in life vantage is skill set? Is that the number one thing? Okay. Just put in the chat. Yes or no. I just want to see kind of what's going on. No, 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 no. Okay, good. You guys are on the right path. Cause if you said yes, let me just explain why that's not true. If this industry or life vantage 
was nothing but skill sets, meaning Rai Fry memorizes this script on how to overcome the objection of I don't have enough money. And everyone learned that. Everyone was memorizing that and knew that skill set. What would that create in the company of LifeVantage? Every single one of us would be a master, a presidential master pro 10, and the company wouldn't have enough money to pay us all out. And therefore, we would not even have this opportunity. Now, am I saying that skill set isn't important? No, I'm just saying it's not everything. So when I learned that from my mentor, that it wasn't everything, I was like, okay, what's the other piece to it then? Because I know skill set's important. I got to learn how to invite. I got to learn to present. I've got to learn how to listen through objections and do those things, right? But if the other piece of it, if that's not everything, then what's the other piece? And it was self-development. Grow as a human and you can't help but your business grow. And so when you mirror those things, the skill sets and the self-development, watch what happens to your business. It gives me chills being able to sit back and watch the creation that you will create with the people around the world. And I promise you this, this has the ability to take you into every single country that we go into around the world. If we are really a legacy company, we'll be here for a hundred years. I'll probably pass away and, you know, I'm going to give this to my kids and, and so forth. Right. But where will we be then? Where will we be in 10 years? How many new markets in 15 and 25 and 30 and 50? And that's a beautiful thing because what happens is that you are going to attract a person that's from California who knows a person in Israel. Well, we're not open in Israel yet, but we might be, who's going to lead you to a person in Amsterdam. And all of a sudden you're building in Amsterdam. And then in Amsterdam, it's going to ping pong back into the US, then down to Mexico, then back up into Southeast Asia. And that's why I love the, the, um, the symbolism behind the acorn. If you really truly understand what the acorn is, there's two really powerful parallels to the acorn. And it isn't until I was sitting on the Edmonds Pier fishing illegal and crabbing illegally to feed my kids that my grandfather's comment to me from a thousand or from one acorn, a thousand forests are born. Well, who's the acorn? You, me. Every single person that I can see their face or that can hear my voice, you're the acorn. Now, what is so powerful about an acorn is that it has everything inside of it to be able to be a 500-year-old oak tree to stand against any storm that ever comes its way. It will drive its roots down deeper, become an ecosystem where forests are created. But what does it do? It sheds 10,000 acorns per year. Now, when a bird picks that up and drops it in another state, when winds pick it up, when waters carry it down and that gets nourished, that seed gets nourished. Why is it, why does it automatically become an oak tree? Because it was born with the DNA of greatness and everything that it knew how to do and how to be to become what it was destined to become. Now, if we're in that same realm and we give ourselves nourishment and we really truly cultivate ourselves and our teams and our leaders in our, in our business, what will they become? They will become the oak trees of your business. They will become the foundation and they will shed tens of thousands of acorns, meaning they will find other leaders in other countries and it will just keep happening and happening. And when you give time, time, all of a sudden you have a massive organization that you cannot exhaust. This is what my grandfather's quote meant to me that pulled me out of the depths of hell to where I found life vantage. And four years later, we're looking at obviously hitting the master pro 10. And that is nothing but a symbolism or a symbol of a great team of an amazing group of leaders across the board. Um, and I'm just really, really humbled. I'm humbled by my cross line. Um, I get really emotional about it. Um, the Poes have no idea how they've influenced me. Carrie Dickey and, and her group of leaders have no idea how they've, they've, they've added to my life. Mark Shinsato, Seth Moeller, I still to this day. I remember in Florida, um, Seth Moeller came walking down the hall when I got invited out to the first um, <laughs> meeting, right? To just check it out. I was behind the curtain and he said, he saw me and he said, oh, no, 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 Rye Fry, you please tell me you're not in this business. And 
and I hadn't talked to Seth for a couple of years. And so I said, I am Seth, but here, let me explain something to you. I've never forgotten the first phone call of your invite to me. And I've watched it ever since. And just because I'm not in your group after understanding the compensation plan, if I go and become the legacy leader that I am absolutely focused on and being a mentor of mentors in this industry, not just this company, that is something that will benefit Seth Mulder and his leaders that continue to grow, right? Because of the global comp plan, how the global payout works. And so this is a celebration for everyone in the company. And, and I just, it, it has nothing to do with RyFry. It just has everything to do with the encompassing of all life vantage, cross line, every single person that's breathed life into my, my journey. And they don't even know it. And that's a beautiful thing as well. And so, yeah, it's an exciting time for all. So next question, Tanya. I don't want to take too much more of your time. And yet I want to take. No, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I know for me too, I've been with Life Vantage for, it'll be 10 years tomorrow, 10 year anniversary. And I know a lot of people too, especially in the day of social media, like growing our database, the fact that you went to Pro 10 as fast as you did, I know your database probably goes deep because you've been in the industry a while, but I also know you haven't utilized social media. So I'd love for you to kind of speak to all of us about how you have continued to grow your database off social media. Yeah, so I, I, I have it. I mean, obviously I have followers and people that, you know, want to be friends and so forth. But um, I'll be honest, guys, I don't build network marketing any way, shape or form through social media. I've never fished online. I've never reached out through, you know, private messenger because I saw someone. I've never entered thousands of groups to be able to build connections and so forth. Do I think that that's working for some leaders? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. There, there's tremendous social media driven or online marketers that are crushing their, their particular companies that they're in, let alone in this industry. And they're, they're giants. But for me, there was a big disconnect. And I'm just talking about me right now. This is my experience. It doesn't make it right or wrong. So if you have an upline or anyone in that world, by all means, try it. If you feel like if the intuition is driving you to that, do it. But what I learned early on in my, in my career and in my, my early years, Tanya, was from my mentor. And my mentor was old school. I mean, he was a belly to belly, knee to knee guy, and he sorted and sifted influence. What do I mean by that? Meaning if I recruit Amy and Amy comes into my business, let me ask you this. How many people think they just recruited one person? Okay. What did I really recruit? I recruited all of every single person that Amy knows now whose responsibility is it to be able to get to as many of those people as possible. Now, everyone's looking at me like, right, right, this is why people have a problem with network marketing. No, it's not. Because if I can't assist Amy as being the professional or the upline as a business partner with her while she's learning the on-the-job training, and I don't get into her influence of people, who loses? Amy loses and she quits. She says it doesn't work. And then who else loses? If I only got through seven of her 700 people, who lost as well? Right, I did, because that's how this business grows. We sort and sift influence, meaning Amy introduces me to her best friend that might be struggling financially. And now there's a common goal and she sees the benefit of life vantage just like Amy did. And I get to do that heavy lifting to the point where Amy sees and she's picking up on certain things, right? And learning it on the job to the point where we bring in her good friend. And then our new friend sits down and we, we lay out a strategy. We start to lay out the whys and the names list and who's the most important influential person in your life. Now, a lot of people say, hey, Tanya, what's your name list? Just write a bunch of people down. Or I see this all the time. Hey, Rai Fry, or, or leaders say, do you know more than 100 people? And everyone's like, I don't think I do. And the guy says, or girl says, well, just pick up your iPhones and, and, and that's how many people you know. And I look at that and I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this is not how network marketing is, is, should be done. I would have much greater success grabbing Seth and saying, hey, Seth, I want you to write down 25 names. And I don't want you to just write those names down. I want you to categorize them from family to friends 
to occupation, to people that you do habits or hobbies with, and let's categorize them. So he might have, of the 25, he might have seven names in his family. And now instead of me saying, hey, Seth, go call seven people, what if I said one step further? And this will give you guys such an incredible mindset to be able to sort and sift and recruit faster, stronger, and better. If Seth took that family name list and took one step further and I said, hey, Seth, I want you now to take those seven family members and categorize them in the most influential people in that family down. So is the aunt the most influential and then the cousin and then your dad and then your brother and then your sister and then your other aunt? Because when I start to recruit with my people, I have them categorize that names list in such a way with friends, family, occupation, hobbies, everything. Because now watch what happens. Hey, Seth, let's call your aunt who's the most influential person of the whole family. Well, why is she the most influential? She's had business minded. She's been an entrepreneur. She knows how to talk. Everyone respects her because she's loyal. She's trusting and all that. So we say, hey, Seth, what's her name? Well, her name's Aunt Betty. Well, great. Let's talk to Aunt Betty. Hey, Aunt Betty, it's Seth. It's Rye Fry. We would love to sit down with you. I want to get your honest opinion about a new business that I'm super, super excited about. When can we sit down and you 30 minutes of your time? And all of a sudden, Aunt Betty says, 8.30 tomorrow at the Starbucks. Great, we're there. Seth and I do a great presentation. And all of a sudden, Betty says what? Will you join our business? Will you assist us? Will you be part of the strategy? We're going to change the world and take this company to a whole new level, let alone change the history of health with our products. And what does she say? Just put in the comment section, the very first person that says yes or no. I don't even care what you say. Okay. She says, yes. Now, what do we do? What's the next phone call? I call the second most influential person. It looks like this. And his, and her name is, let's say Leslie. Okay. And it's a cousin. Hey, Leslie, it's Rye Fry. It's it, and it's Seth and it's Aunt Betty. We're super, super excited. We've become partners in a business that we're super excited about. We need to sit down with you, Leslie, because this could absolutely benefit your life in such a huge way. We need 30 minutes of your time. Well, what does Leslie say? What's the mindset of Leslie? Well, Leslie's looking at it saying, I already know what Aunt Betty's done in her life. Absolutely. I love Seth. He's such a great guy. I don't really know who Rye Fry is. That's be, 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 besides the point. But all of a sudden, Aunt Betty now sits down on a 30-minute presentation. And what does Leslie say? Leslie, what do you say? Yes or no? Just nod your head. She says, yes. Oh, my gosh. We're doing really, really well. Is that different than here's 25 names. Go ahead and call them, Seth. Call me next week and let me know how you did. Like there gets to be professionalism in what we do with our network marketing business in Life Gen Vantage. I like to get the biggest bang for my buck. And that's what we mean by sorting and sifting. Now let's say Rye Fry, Seth, Leslie, and Betty call the next person. And that is Michelle Poe. Okay, we sit down with Michelle. Michelle says, no, I'm not interested. Who do we call? We call the next person, the fourth most influential person in the family. And we say, boom, 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 boom. It's all of us. And that person's name was Brandy. And Brandy says, yes, now who do we call? Do I call the next person under Brandy or do I go back to Michelle and say, hey, Michelle, you know what Brandy can do. We're now all part of this. We're going to give you another chance. For some reason, you didn't understand what we were talking about, but we really want you to be a part of this. And all of a sudden we have a different conversation and now Brandy's a part of it as well. And Michelle gets to say yes or no. What does she say? More than likely she says, yes, I don't want to miss this. Friends do what friends do. Family does what family does. And so I leverage that to the hilt, Tanya. And that's how you drive volume. That's how you sort and sift. Now here's the beautiful thing. If all of a sudden Michelle Poe becomes the hot molecule is what I call them. The hot molecule meaning she is ignorance on fire. She loves it. She sees it. She's passionately burning. She is getting it handled. And all of a sudden she goes out to her best friends, her family, her occupation and stuff. And she puts 15 or 20,000 in volume. Now, what if Seth's not doing anything? Leslie's not doing anything. Aunt Betty's not doing anything because she got sideswiped with her business and it's taken her away from it. But all of a sudden, Rye Fry and Michelle Poe are driving $20,000 in volume. Now, what does that do to Leslie, Aunt Betty, and Seth? Are they going to quit the business? 
they would never quit the business. There's 20,000 in volume. I call that a locker. And what you do is you drive and sort and sift volume. You lock it in by, by that hot molecule. And you'll see them. They pop up in your business. They are on fire. And you run with them and you match energy as much as you possibly can. And what happens is when they start to slow down, I match energy with energy. And I go look at the next hot molecule. And we go and drive and sort and sift volume. Because here's what happens. In a year from now, I call Seth back. He's been, in, he's been not engaged. And I say, hey, Seth, it's Rye Fry. Hey, remember when you said yes to your life a year ago with Life Vantage? And he says, yeah. I said, well, let me just give you a heads up. We have actually pushed this much volume in your business. And therefore, if you want to get engaged, I will assist you in moving your business forward for you to capture that volume that's now there every single month. But know this, Seth, every month that you don't engage with me, and I'm here to assist you and help you in every way. But every month you don't, you're leaving money on the table. Is that a bigger motivation than me saying, hey, Seth, will you do my network marketing business with me? Can we do this, buddy? You're going to be the best. You know, I don't bribe people to do this. You have to posture. You have to be bold. You have to know where you're going. People love to follow people where they know where they're going. But what we get to do, if the, everyone seems to forget, everyone, even me at this line of leadership and me knowing this, Sometimes I lose my unconsciousness with regards to the main word as to why we do what we do. And that word is leverage. So why are we not leveraging our names list? Why are we not leveraging each other? Why are we not leveraging everything that this industry and life vantage has to offer for us to do what? Be the biggest benefit for the world and change the world's health, change the world's sickness in their finances, and being able to have the freedom to enjoy both. Because when someone says no to Rye Fry, I ask him this question, Tanya, what are you not interested in? Having another stream of income, having better health, or having more freedom to enjoy both of those? What are you not interested in of those three? What are you honestly going to say? Like, like if you ask someone honest, that honest question, what are they going to say? I don't want more money. I don't want to have another stream of income. If they're struggling financially, why would they say that? Everyone in America knows they need to increase their health. We know that. And then we often see and hear that I don't want to be the richest guy in the retirement home. I want to be the person that enjoys the freedom, has the health, and has the finances to go do what I want, when I want, where I want, with who I want. And that's what we have. Now, I asked another group this morning. I said, what do we sell? Just write in the chat. What do you guys sell? I'm so curious about this question. What do you sell? Life. All right, Jen, that's cool. You sell hope, Helen. All right. Um, yourself, hopes and dreams we serve. All right. Keep going, guys. Health, a living, happiness. Let's see one more. Someone else. Health. Okay. We sell that. No, we don't. That's a byproduct of what I'm going to teach you right now. And this is what I learned in my first week of network marketing. And my upline said, Rye Fry, what do we sell? And I'm like, well, we sell products. We sell health. We sell this. We sell that. Blah, blah. He's like, no, we don't. We sell 30 minute blocks of time. Think about it. The person, the distributor, the team that sells more blocks of time to be able to tell the story of Life Vantage, to share the products with them, to talk about the timing, to talk about what leverage means in their life and how our comp plan will financially change their world if they get after it. And that's what we don't understand. We, we're just out here floating around, buy my pill, push this, do this, that, and the other. Yes, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying for Rye Fry, it became really, really mind driven to where there's a philosophy of how and why to do this. Because if I do this, I get the biggest bang for my buck. Now, how many people really honestly raise your hands, want to do this the right way or the wrong way? I want to do it the right way. I've gone through all the brain damage. I've done things the wrong way. And what it does is it confuses, it hurts, it stings. And you lose people all day long. And so when I started learning this, Tanya, like I just felt like it was my mission to assist people that wanted to do network marketing professionally, not just I want to get my bills paid. That's a, that's a big thing, right? There's a big difference between I want to have a life in network marketing and life advantage or make a living. Two different things. If you want to make a living, yes, you can do that. You make an extra 800 bucks, an extra whatever, but I wanted a life with life manage. 
And when you want a life with life vantage, your mindset instantly changes to what? You're not focused on how do I cover my cell phone. You're focused on self-development. You're working on your skill sets and all of the rest will follow that. It'll follow it, guys. And I just want you all to know that you are born with greatness. You are destined to become whatever you want with this company, whatever rank. And if you're struggling with the mindset of, I don't think I can get to the elite levels, I'm okay at pro five. I'm challenging you to push through that. That is stinky thinking. Someone told me the only reason that network marketing is yucky is because of the way that particular person is doing it. And I thought, holy cow, what a great reminder. Are we doing it yucky? Or are we doing it professional? Are we doing it in a way that someone would be like, I've got to be a part of Rye Fry's group because that dude is going somewhere and there's something about it. And I just feel like I'm going to miss something out. That's how we want to be. We want to just be attracting these people that just can't seem to say what is going on with that. I remember when I spoke at an event and I mentioned um, Michelle's name and the one thing about Michelle and Sean and Sean does it very quietly, but Michelle is a big personality and beautiful and all she got all of it there. But what's beautiful about it is that she knows deep down inside what when you meet Michelle Poe, you're either going to light on fire or you're going to melt. And she doesn't care what, which way you go. It's not her decision. It's the person that's being attracted to that, right? So we get to be that way in our lives. Guys, I wasn't always like this. I was scared to death to speak. I was all of that. I was tripping and stumbling. I didn't know how to present. But one person said, what's the single most important thing in network marketing? What do you think the single most thing in network marketing is? Put it in the chat. Well, the single most thing, communication. Oh my gosh, Seth, that's a big one right? We've got to learn how to communicate. Is it the number one? No. Okay. What else? Name it. The number one personal development. Oh man. I like that. Okay. People promotion, self-development. Mia, you're on it. Self-confidence. It's all wrong. I haven't seen it yet. Keep going. The number one, most important thing in network marketing, how to present. Okay. I can't do presenting unless I do this first. That's a little hint. Being you belief, connection, not quitting. All of this is important but none of this happens until we what? Invite, invite, invite. I can't overcome objections until I invite someone and present to them. I can't do a presentation unless I learn to invite properly. I can't get them to a meeting unless I invite them. They can't see what life advantage is if I don't invite them to global or get on a webinar or do any of that. Everything in network marketing starts with what? The invite. And so how many people, just be honest right now, how many people struggle with inviting? Raise your hands, okay? It sucks. I did the same thing. I'm over there throwing up on people. All of a sudden, I'd be like, hey, would you like to see something about my business? And they're like, well, yeah, what is it? And I'm just like, boom, I just, I, I refer it to, to uh, fishing. How many people have fished, right? And it's like us fishing out of the boat. And all of a sudden, you know how you see the fish come up to the lure and you're like, holy cow, he's going to take the bait. Oh my goodness. He's right there. He's so interested. And we grab the whole tackle box and we chuck it all on top of this fish. What does it do to the fish? Scares the hell out of him and that thing's gone in a heartbeat, right? So we do the same thing in our network marketing. Soon as someone says, Tanya, tell me about it. This is amazing. Tell me about your product. What they're really saying is this, tell me just enough so I can say no. I'm not asking you questions to be able to say yes. Most people on the fly are saying, just tell me enough so I can say, eh, that's really not for me, Crystal. I'm not really a pill person. Megan, I'm really not into that. I, I kind of make my own money. It's pretty good. But what if we just controlled ourselves and just kept slowly bringing that person in based on the curiosity? I'll give you a four-step formula that has changed my network marketing career that I learned early on. It's called the four C's of inviting. And we can get into this, Tanya, if you want to do another training, I'm happy to do it. I do this around the world. This was a formula that changed my life. And my mentor gave it to me and he says, Rye Fry, you better learn how to uh, compliment. That's your first C. Hey, Tanya, it's Rye Fry. I've watched you in your softball career. You were nothing but a focus driven person and you proved it on the field with regards to your leadership, that's the kind of person that I'm looking for. Is that a genuine compliment? Okay. It's not some fictitious compliment. 
if I haven't talked to Tanya in five years and she's on my names list and all of a sudden I call her and I give her this big fictitious um, uh, compliment, what does it automatically do? Scares the heck out of her. She's out of there. So just be honest with what that compliment is. Well, what it does, it leads you to what? The second C, which is create curiosity. What killed the cat? Curiosity. And when you think about, do we at LifeVantage have something to be curious about? Name all the different things from our products to our comp to Nerf 2, what's in our pro tandem, all of our patents, ABC primetime. We're expanding globally. We've done 225 million. We pay 43% out. I mean, the list goes on and on and on for us to be able to take two or three of those and create the curiosity. Hey, Dory, I give her a compliment. I'm excited about something that this company is doing. They're changing the world's health. There was an ABC primetime investigation that proved in two weeks that you can increase or decrease the inflammation of the body up to 50%. Dory, inflammation is in every single person. And this product actually reduces that with a patent. And they're looking for people that allows them some extra income. When can I come and see you? Okay, now if I've created the curiosity correctly, what is automatically going to happen? Okay, if I peak Jen's curiosity, what is automatically going to happen out of Jen's mouth? Hey, Rifri, tell me about Nerf 2. I've never heard of that word. And that is where we get to learn the third C. And the third C is control yourself knowing that people are asking questions to say no in a snapshot as opposed to getting the whole picture. Now, if I'm on the phone with Jen and this is 90% visual, it'd be like me saying, hey, Jen, I'd like to give you a haircut over the, over the phone. Would Jen say uh, that's impossible, right? And it is impossible. Same with us and LifeVantage and how we present this business. They have to see exactly what it is we're doing from A to Z. And when they can visually see it from the company stamp, standpoint to the products, to the timing, to the leverage, to the comp, all of a sudden you're, increased, you're increasing your ability to recruit and bring them on as a long-term business partner. Now, what happens when you control yourself? And that looks like this. Hey, Jen, it's Rye Fry. We piqued the curiosity. The questions start to be answered or asked. And I say, hey, Jen, those are the same questions that I had. And you know what's really interesting? I have a business partner. Her name is Amy. She's been with the business now for four years. And what's beautiful is she's climbing the, she's climbing the ranks and she's really, really qualified to answer that question. She's doing a webinar tonight at 7.30 or tomorrow morning. Will you be on that call? And so what I've done is I've controlled myself. I've then now taken her to the 4C, which is to what? Commit them to something. Commit them to a three-way call. Commit them to a 30-minute time slot at the Starbucks. Commit them to a webinar. Commit them to a global, to an LVA, to a live meeting that's being done in your area. Commit them to watching a video. Something with a ticking time bomb that now allows Amy to do what? Follow up and follow through. And I promise you guys, if you do this, compliment, create curiosity, control yourself, control yourself, control yourself when those questions start to get answered or asked and then commit them to the event. And when you do this, they now get to see the picture of LifeVantage in its entirety before they make a snap decision and lose out a tremendous opportunity, and we do as well. And so, Tanya, those are the things that I really learned and they've proven to work over the, the periods and eons of time since this industry was started. And so a lot of times the reason why I feel like people default to social media is because they feel like it's going to be the easiest track for them. And my challenge would be this. If social media is your ticket to build in network marketing, go learn how to be a professional network marketer via social media. And there's tremendous leaders that will teach you that. But don't just go and, and just completely bastardize the whole thing and cannibalize the whole industry to the point where what? All of a sudden, we have every single person that's in your, in your social media looking and saying, this is why I hate network marketing. It's just this constant bombardment of look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. And so I've just trusted, Tanya, that belly to belly, sorting and sifting properly 
it might not be the fastest, but it's the more, it's way more sustainable from what I've experienced. Meaning when you build that foundation that's solid on leader, on leader, on leader, on leader, on leader, you can't exhaust your business from going back and forth or yo-yoing up and down. And so if anything, just do it professionally. But I see too many people and I'm just going to, I came across this that I want to share with you real quick. Um, and, and it reminded me of, oh, this, it says a recent study. This was really cool. A recent study showed that people spend five times as much on lotto tickets as they do on books. Quit looking for the shortcut to money. The juice is in the earning of it, not in the winning of it by chance. Grow yourself equals grow your money. Now, how does that equate to network marketing? That I look at it the same way. I look at social media, and this isn't disrespectful for those that are doing it properly and professionally. Because they're not just out just cannibalizing our industry and, and ticking people off. They're doing it very, very differently. And so what I see most people default to is when they've called a couple people, they're scared to death to call. They're scared to learn the skill sets of network marketing. And all of a sudden now they hide behind their screen and they think they're doing it properly. That's like winning the lotto. That's like trying to win the lotto with the ticket. And it's just a shortcut that will never get you there. And I challenge people to grow yourself, learn the skill sets, and then incorporate social media. Because when you are doing social media and your skill sets at a whole new level, your belief levels there, your feelings there with the company, you know all those things, you're now talking to those people very differently than if you didn't know that. And so I love that about what's going on. I love you. And oh, thank I love you. too, like a big takeaway, I think from that, you guys is asking the right questions, right? Like if we're looking to bring in, if we're at a time, I think at LifeVantage where we really want to bring in more distributors, more team members. And what I get from you, Rai Fry, is first of all, like leveling up who we're looking for, but also really making sure that we go deep with them and we ask them enough questions to make sure that this is somebody we want to invest our time in, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, guys, like I do a commitment letter with every single person I personally sponsor and I sit down with them for an hour and a half and more of an interview process with asking them questions. Why do I do that? Because I want to know if Tanya, how she works, how she functions, what's going on in her brain, how she looking at things. If I say, hey, Tanya, on a scale of one to 10, what is your level of commitment to you achieving your goals with LifeVantage? And she says a four, that gives me an, that instantly tells me who I'm working with. If I ask her, hey, Tanya, how many hours a week are you going to work on your LifeVantage business? And she says, um, eight. And that's where we leave it. Oh my gosh, Tanya has eight hours a week to work on her business. This is incredible. We've got an incredible person. I could almost see her as a pro 10. There's one of my legs that's actually taken care of. But if I don't ask Tanya, okay, eight hours. Okay, explain to me, Tanya, how that eight hours is going to work. Do you, are you looking at eight hours in one day? Are you looking at Monday through Thursday, two hours a day? What, what does that look like, Tanya? And you can unmute yourself. We'll role play real, real quick. Oh boy. <laughs> you know, is it eight hours on a Saturday? Is it four hours, two days a week? What does that look like? Probably two hours a day. Okay. Two hours a day. Is, is it better Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday? Or are there certain days of the week that you actually have to take off due to life lifing on you? Yeah. Monday through Thursday, because I'm a mom as well. And my husband and my, what my kids, I want them to come first. Okay. That's beautiful. I, and I appreciate that. And I respect that. And I'll do everything in my power as a business partner to make sure that that's something that's at the forefront of our, of our working relationship. But please help me understand Monday through Thursday, is that going to be best in the morning, midday, or in the afternoon or in the evening? Mm. It'll probably be best in the morning. Okay. In the morning, does that mean eight to 10? Are you an early riser? I know you're on the East coast. I think you're on the East coast. I'm not sure. I think, or maybe, no, you're a West coast person, aren't you? I'm Idaho. Oh, I love Idaho. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're in mountain standard time, right? So yep. is that better at from eight to 10 or nine to 11? What does that look like in the morning for you? Eight to 10 is probably actually perfect. right after the kids go to school. Okay. So eight to 10 Monday through Thursday, is that something I can write down? Yeah. Okay. So guys, how many people would say it stop? How many hours a week do you got, Tanya? Oh, I have eight. Oh my gosh, this is great. But if I don't know how to carve that up and how many hours now, what's beautiful is that Tanya and I get to now strategize two hours a day. I know what's in my calendar from eight to 10. Now I might not be there for two hours the whole time, but we have things that we're going to compress in that two hours 
to where Tanya can then take that two hours, put it on her shelf, go be the best mother that she can possibly be, go to her job and not worry about life manage because tomorrow is that two hours to follow up and follow through and strategize that two hours. Guys, this is, this is how we need to function because your success in this industry will expedite. You will get to these levels. You won't have as much brain damage. Okay, too many of us forget that network marketing is not hunting, it's farming. You see the difference? I'm not hunting for a rye fry. I'm not hunting for a, a Michelle and Sean Poe. I'm not hunting for a person that's gonna be the lotto ticket for me to win to sit on the beach. I'm looking to absolutely cultivate and nourish and fertilize and water and trim all the weeds around this person and this plant and develop it into what it was destined to become. And that takes love. It takes passion. It takes respect. It takes appreciation. It takes praise. And a lot of people don't have the patience to do that. They just want it now. I call it a microwave society, especially in network marketing. Too many people say, right I signed my, my distributorship agreement and I didn't make a million dollars this last month and this thing sucks and the industry's BS. And I'm just sitting here going, this is crazy. How you look at our industry or how you look at this company and you didn't do any work, but yet it's a fraud, it's a scam, it's this, it's that. And I'm sick and tired of it. And I'm getting, it's, I, I want everyone to stand up for this industry because we dominate every single industry out there. You realize that real estate is the only other industry that has created more millionaires than network marketing. You could combine the NFL, you could combine all of the music industry and all of the movie industry, and we still do more sales per year than those three. I mean, it's fascinating. And half of that's going back in commissions to distributors like you and I, and you're gonna tell me it doesn't work? So guys, I love this industry. We could sit here all night. I promise you, I have another six hours where I wouldn't even take a breath, but I won't do that to you. I know it's late, but um, it's just fun to talk real and be authentic and, and really talk about how this industry can be done and, and is being done by some of the highest level distributors in not only Life Vantage, but across the board. And so if I'm a pro three and a pro four and a pro five learning and wanting to learn this stuff, Abraham Lincoln said it best. If I have five minutes to cut the tree down, you spend four minutes on sharpening the ax, the skill sets, the self-development side of things, and then you go to work, right? How'd you learn how to drive or how'd you learn how to ride a bike? Did you watch it or did you actually get on that thing, pedal the bike, pile drive your face into the cement three or four times, hit into a car, flip over the weeds, go over the bushes, and then all of a sudden you learned how to ride a bike. If I just look and watch and never get on for the first time, I'm never going to know how to ride a bike. And we do that in network marketing. We sit on the sidelines. We think we're growing our business. We look into it. We check our website. We check our back office. Well, what's Tanya doing today? Oh, she hasn't done anything. There's no new distributors. There's no new you know, customers. What is she doing? Something's wrong with her. And we haven't done anything ourselves. And I'm saying, get on the bike, get into network marketing, get into your life vantage business. If you're scared, go to your programming. Let's do some work there. Let's self-develop. And all of a sudden your feeling will change. And when your feeling changes, the belief level of this industry and this company and what you're going to accomplish in this deal is going to be incredible. And your activity will always mirror your belief. Always. And all of a sudden the results will kick out, customers will be there and you will live a different lifestyle. So you guys got this, everything's inside of you. We have global coming up. If you haven't made that commitment, oh my gosh, that's the one first thing you need to do. I don't care if it's virtual or if you can get your butt in a car and drive 15 hours or three days, just get to global and sit there and be a sponge and absorb everything you possibly can and then take it back home and put it into action. And in 90 days, your life will be different. And so this isn't rocket science. This isn't a respecter of persons. This isn't Rai Fry achieved Master Pro 10 because he's got 19 years of experience. And of course, that's why he made it. BS. That has nothing to do with it. When I started in Life Vantage, I had to start right from zero. A lot of people say, well, did you bring your whole team over? No, I didn't. Do you guys realize that in network marketing, any leader that jumps ship and goes to another deal very seldom will bring less than five to 8% of his downline. 
They're not bringing $280,000 of volume out of that company. Why? Because Leslie's making enough money to where she's like, hey, Rye Fry, I love you. And I, I think you're a great leader and I want you to stay, but I'm making six grand a month. I can't move. I'm not doing this. And they stay. So that, that myth is not true. And so what's beautiful about this thing is, is that we get to trip and stumble and become the best versions of ourselves. This isn't just because Rye Fry was 19 years in the industry has nothing to do with it. What it does is it has everything to do with consistency every single day long enough for the eternal laws of network marketing, the eternal truths that if you run the numbers long enough and consistently enough, you will absolutely grow. This is not a respecter of persons. It doesn't care if you're ugly, fat, if you have one eye, no eyes, if you're deaf, blind, one leg, it doesn't matter. What it matters, what matters to it is this. If you consistently do the work, self-develop, continue to consistently do the income producing activities, invite, present, overcome the objections. I love what, um, what Gloria Waterhouse says, listening through objections, not just overcoming them. That sounds a little bit off. Listening. And then you're loving on your people and you become a true partner with them and you do network marketing professionally and you run the numbers of network marketing and it will not fail you. I sent Amy a text message later on this evening or earlier this evening. And I do, I do see certain people that are destined to be the face of this company. And I'm literally hoping and cheering and breathing life into them to say, I see it already, but do you really, really see it? And I know you do, but are you willing to go and do some programming to increase your feeling, which leads to a bigger belief, which increases the activity more consistently, the results show up and your lifestyle changes. From one, ac from one acorn, a thousand forests are born. You're the acorn. Do you guys realize that I'm going to, and then I'm going to shut up, Tanya. Do you guys realize that in one acorn, if I pick that thing up, does anyone know, just put in the chat, does anyone know what the speed of light travels at? How many miles per second? If you do, just put it in the chat. It's 187,000 miles per second. 187, that's one second to the moon. The moon's 189,000 miles away. One second. If I picked up that acorn and was able to ping that into space and it traveled at the speed of light for one year and it hit into a planet or whatever and the environment was right and it was nourished and it was cultivated and it was watered and fertilized and it, was, and it was given sun what would the acorn do it would grow it would become the oak tree that will stand the test of time and i'm sitting here really pleading to every single leader to breathe life be that farmer that loves and appreciates and praises their people long enough for them to believe in it themselves and you will continue to build an army of people around the world. And that's when we know we've done exactly what we were destined to do with this company and with our own lives. And, um, and we can look in the mirror and say, well done. I'm really happy with the person that I am. And um, that's a powerful feeling. So Tanya, I'll turn it back over to you. Dang. Okay, well, don't be surprised if I ask you for more training at another time. And I cannot wait for the moment they announce you as the new Master Pro 10, and I hope you take as long as you stink in one on <laughs> stage and just like, you will be hearing all of us shouting from the rooftops and congratulating you. So thank you so much for this time. I wanted to ask you too, we always end our Team Act Zoom with a prayer and I would love to just pray over you before we go, if that's okay. That'd be amazing. I would appreciate that. Okay. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for the mold that is Rye Fry and the fact that you busted it after you created him. Thank you for his heart, his desire to learn, his desire to stay consistent and keep growing. Thank you for my dog. Um, just thank you so much that he came here tonight and that Life Vantage found him and that he has the humble and servant heart he has to just be with all of us tonight. I just pray that everyone that is here and everyone that watches this playback is just um, blessed by this and that it can open their heart and their mind to the abundance that can be a part of their life as well. Help us all to just believe bigger and believe faster 
and to go faster with this gift of life vantage that you've given us because all of us that have been given it, it is not by chance. It is for a reason. So help us to lean into you as we go forward and just to believe in a really big way that this is here for a reason and we can make it as big as we want. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Right. Thank you so Thank much you. for being here. So grateful. Cannot wait to see you at Global. Congratulations again on Pro 10. All right, let's go change the world. Love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Cheers.